So I hope you know something about the EBU. It's the European Broadcasting Union. We represent uh, 73 members in 56 countries altogether. Um, I've got a little bit more to say, but there you go. I'm a broadcaster, so what can you say? Um, any time, any place, anywhere. That was a marketing campaign for Martini many years ago when I was younger. But it just about describes what consumers expect from today's media experience. People are now watching content on a wider variety of devices than ever before, and they expect quality services. And broadcasters have made their services extend far beyond the original broadcast. But broadcasting remains the primary means to get to large audiences and receiving the highest quality TV services. There are 1,271 uh, high definition channels in Europe, according to the Eurobarometer, and great programs require investment. I'd like to say that public service media companies, which we represent, um, make a huge contribution, investing about 20 billion euros in content each year in Europe, directly benefiting the, benefiting the cultural um, industry <coughs> and the creative industries in Europe, which are a very important area. And broadcasters want large audiences. That's the business we're in. And distribution via satellite, cable, internet, digital, terrestrial, all these things are important. Each one has its own uh, benefits and strengths. And really, they complement each other. And DTT is the one that uh, most of the free-to-air services rely on, is the backbone of this in many countries. Um, and because it offers a unique characteristic in terms of reach, efficiency, and affordability, we just heard about pay TV. But there are many opportunities for free-to-air broadcasting, and DTT is the one that primarily is used to do that. And this model, where it has one to many properties and it guarantees good access quality, uh, major live events watched simultaneously by millions of viewers, where other networks might suffer from congestion, is a key factor, and we shouldn't throw that away. So what role might hybrid broadcast broadband networks play in this context? Well, we shouldn't get mixed up with converged content and converged networks. You know, these hybrid broadcast broadband networks do not, networks do not exist yet today. What does exist are devices that are able to receive programs and services via broadcast and broadband. And we need to ensure that both networks can set, coexist and that their strengths complement each other um, as they do today. And 5G is currently being hyped as the cure for all ills. It's the, um, the great hybrid broadcast broadband solution. Um, but caution, at present this is not actually a standard. This is something that's being developed as a standard. It won't be ready, it ratified as a standard until 2020. And we shouldn't believe in a miracle solution for distributing all content. It will certainly take time before any network to displace what we have today in cable, satellite and terrestrial. And certainly in the case of DTT, where I think about 250 million households rely on it for their main TV, um, it's going to be hard to replace all those receivers out there with some new technology which is yet to be proven. But 5G is potentially an opportunity for audiovisual media sector. Once the technical requirements are met, once the regulatory conditions to ensure prominence of public service media and prevent gatekeeping are met, and citizens will have universal access to broadcast services in a free-to-air mode. If that can be met, then 5G might have a chance to carry uh, broadcast services. And we welcome the work of the 5G PP um, to consider the requirements for AV media services. And as the EBU, we're also involved in the 3G PP process to try and get some understanding of what this technology may offer in the future. Unfortunately, it's often couched as being a solution for Internet of Things, machine to machine, the connected car, etc., etc., medical health. If all that's going on, will there be room for broadcast services, I wonder? So, there is a success in Europe, though, however, and that is hybrid delivery or hybrid broadcast broadband. Um, it's called HBB TV. It works on most TV sets, whether they're delivering terrestrial, satellite, or cable. Um, and it's some cable boxes don't allow it to be passed through, that's one of the issues. But it is an open standard, and the quality of offering that you can get on even a TV for as little as 250 euros in Belgium. It offers you connected TV, high definition channels, great catch-up service from broadcasters, and if you want to subscribe to over-the-top services, you can do. It's very easy to do that. So it's a great convergent platform, it mixes together broadband and broadcast in a very affordable solution. And you may not know about it because you don't necessarily receive those services yourselves. You're probably uh, able to afford 
um, lots of subscription channels or you've got a mobile platform like a tablet that does wonderful things for you. But in some countries, like in Spain, RTVE, uh, they're offering um, a plus 24 channel with five streaming channels. They're doing 4K test content that they produce themselves, and that's delivered using HPB TV. They've got a clan channel for children. They've got news special video services, synchronous second screen content. Um, there's HPB TV behind at least five broadcast channels, including three a la carte in Catalan. And in Germany, um, ProSiebenSat did a commercial campaign recently using HPB TV, and they found some interesting statistics, you know, that red button users are predominantly male between 20 and 49 years old. That's how you access it, through the red button. Um, Netflix must have figured that out, because the Netflix button on the Sony remote control that you get nowadays is, is red. But there you are. Um, the biggest red button, too. But they get top results when they're promoted on the launch bar. And they get a positive image shift from this campaigning. And just to talk about generally in Germany, HPB TV is a success because in the last few years, 2008 to 14, there have been 16 million sets sold in Germany. And the connection rate is 79%. And it's expected to grow to 35 million sets connected in 2019. The ease of use is what's catching on with the public and making it very attractive. So, 4K, ultra high definition, will it ever get here? Um, the public see the sets on sale, the standards are not yet fully developed, and although they might be able to see 4K television content, they're not necessarily going to get it if they take it home. There's not many people broadcasting it. And the capacity is rather limited to do that because typically it's three to four times the rate that HD needs, whether it's delivered via satellite, cable, or the internet. And these changes are, are not going to, these improvements in compression are not going to allow any great change to that in the, in the years to come. It can be delivered, and some US VOD operators are investing in content and delivering it to people who pay for it. However, um, getting live TV that way is going to take some time. Satellite can do it, but other networks have struggled to do so, and I think to get large network adoption of this service is going to take some time because channels need to have a large audience and people don't have 4K TV in mass audiences yet to pay for it. Pay TV might have an opportunity to get started with this. But imagine, you know, the live show, which is the lifeblood of a TV channel. It's bad enough having a buffering delay, but if your neighbour hears the football score 30 seconds before you do, then maybe streaming 4K over broadband won't be such a great idea. And there are a number of things holding back online distribution in general. Today, broadcasters spend about 17% um, of their distribution budget to reach 3% of their audience, which is the on-demand audience. So that can't sustain the method of delivering content over broadband for OTT services is not something that will sustain. We need new models for this. And current models you know, on networks are too costly for many viewers, mobile networks, that is. TV viewing accounts for 3 hours 40 minutes per day per person on average in the EU. And it's simply unsustainable to deliver that amount of data through mobile networks. And I think that's something we need to take into consideration in the future. So, um, net neutrality has been um, maintained, which is good. And it needs to be maintained to allow a wide range of content offerings without any artificial constraints. But convergence doesn't imply all services were delivered only over broadband networks. They can be delivered by all the networks that we have available to us. And we should take advantage of that. So large audiences might be better served with broadcast and niche audiences by broadband. This is something that's perfectly possible in the future. And I think you'll see a future where um, content is delivered to devices and cached more on memory in devices that we haven't seen yet. And this hybrid solution is something we all need to work on. So, um, the audiovisual and radio sector is in need of an umbrella scheme to bridge the gaps between R&D, content production and technology innovation in the media field. The EU research programmes can help with this through funding the research and promoting solutions that are supporting the European content industry. And by working together and collaborating we can make European content a world leader in quality and delivery. But the bottleneck is not video, that's not the problem, it's the demand for the video that's the bottleneck. So we have to find ways of delivering this. Broadcasting was designed from the outset to deliver efficiently to all citizens. And I think we have to take advantage of all the networks available to us to make this work in future. There's a huge amount of programs available today. It's all very good stuff. 
but it's important that content developed by public service media organisations which responds to public policy requirements like diversity informed citizenship can be easily found by audiences and never get crowded out in the future. So to wrap up, to get the best of European content to consumers requires the use of collaborative networks, making the best of broadband, mobile and broadcast services. And UHD services are going to come, but today you know, channels might require 40 megabits per second of sustained bitrate. I don't know how many people in this room have got that on their broadband service. Okay, there's a hand up over there. Do your neighbours have it as well? Are they all watching UHD TV at the same time as you? Maybe not. Well, let's see if they do when it works. Um, so, hybrid broadcast broadband is useful. It shows potential already and can be used to deliver UHD TV already. And 5G is not yet the answer. Once standardised, it could provide some opportunities, as long as universality and access to free-to-air services included. The EU can fund research into unlocking the potential for the best creative talent to work with the best R&D organisations to create the next world-beating services in Europe, and I hope we can all work together to achieve that. Thank you.